Okay, folks. Continuing in the fourth essay. Um, the Altarab explains. This is a bit um, mystical. That. Why is it that Torah study, like we're doing now, is divinity? Um, what is the, the geography to understand that? To understand on how that happens? As opposed to um, other things of the creative force. So we mentioned that that uh, Chachma Ilah, supernal divine wisdom, is the source of uh, vitality of everything in creation. Torah study, we explained yesterday. Uh, Torah, uh, Torah teachings, uh, as it comes down into this world, does not uh, conceal, does not conceal the divine wisdom, the divine supernal wisdom, whereas a granule of uh, a granule of sand, or the love and awe that the soul experiences, does conceal the divine wisdom. Um, so, further to understand that, everything that that is created comes from starts in in Chabad which is wisdom understanding and knowledge that's the the generality the specifics is the Chachma level and the Chabad as it's in the world of Asiya world of Asiya the world of action the spiritual world so the Nishama level there's three dimensions Nefesh, Ruch, Neshama. Neshama level is the source of life for the Ruch and Nefesh level. Now, what's the distinction? The Neshama level of, of the divine attributes of Chabad in the world of Asiya is divinity itself. The nefesh ruach level are not divinity. It's already cre creation. Creation ex nihilo. Something from nothing. So the, all that derives from there is, um, is the creative power of the Chabad, of the world of Asiya, that now is the source the res uh, for for life, um, which would be then seemingly just a, a small deri a derivative close to it. It's also Chabad, but it's Nefesh Ruach level that is um, at all of its offsprings, which is brought into being by Ex Nihilo, something from nothing. And therefore, the Chabad of Asiya, right, the Neshama level, the Neshama state, is the source for all created beings. However, the Chabad of the laws of Torah, with their rationales, that are in Malchus of the world of Bria and Yitzira, so this level of of Chabad is not the source for created beings. It's not the source of created beings. It's Chabad, but it's the source or it's where the the laws of Torah and with their rationales 
are expressed in the world of Bria and Yetzirah. So in the world of Bria would be the world of divine comprehension. So it would be the comprehension of the law, which would be like the Gemara, um, and the Gemara part of the Talmud. And then in the Yetzirah would be the Mishnah, which would be the, um, the adjudicated law. Okay. And, and as a result, it brings a rectification on this level to the visage of Atsilus. In other words, in Atsilus, it's beyond any rationale. It's beyond any um, comprehension. And it brings a... Um, a rectification because it's the world of Tikkun as opposed to Natsilus is a world of Tohu world of rectification as opposed to the world of chaos and, and Natsilus and it brings um, sort of an orderly understanding very um, challenged idea over here. So, in other words, let me try to put it into words and maybe make it. The rational laws of the Torah, right, that bring to us as humans an understanding of the teachings really come from a place that's far and above and beyond the world of tohu the world where the light is great and the vessel that can't contain it so it really comes from a higher place right it only descends into the world of Bria and Yetzirah for our sake so we can have a rational understanding of that law that really comes from a place that is beyond rationale of the parts of, of Atsilos, of the, the visage of Atsilos, of the uh, uh, divinity that is in the world of Atsilos, right? And, and now the Alter Rebbe goes into a Kabbalistic understanding of this, which I'm not certain I have a complete clarity. The, the, the point over here is, is that creation comes from, everything comes from Chabad. Yesterday we spoke about supernal wisdom, Chachmi law. That's the original source, but it's basically Chabad. Think about it. Everything comes from a perception. Right, let's take it in the human realm. Everything comes from perception. How you perceive something is going to be, meaning in, in your intelligence, that will be how you will feel about something. How you feel about something will then bring you to how, what you think about. You know, you think about those things that you have a feeling towards. And then, of course, you'll speak about those things that you have a feeling towards, right? And then you'll act upon, right? But where does it all start? In Chabad, okay? So, what does that mean over here? It, it, it means in the divine level, everything is Chabad. Now, everything is Chabad. The distinction, though, is not everything has a... Um, a direct connection to to that Chabad level, that it is um, a reflection of its source. So the Chabad of Asiya, the world of Asiya, the world of action, the spiritual world of action, right? The it the is the state is the source of all created beings, um, and and of course it. That has to be the, you know, the divinity there, and that's there for the neshama level. 
but then the neshama level is responsible for all created beings, ex nihilo, that, you know, um, come to be created, and therefore the lower stages of creation, which will include angels and souls and so on, that are created um, from that level, and uh, including the uh, nefesh and ruach levels of the world of Asiya, of even the Chabad of Asiya, right? And everything thereafter, which means it's a creative being, because the nefesh and ruach levels are already um, disconnected from the source of complete identification with the divine, and they are um, have a sense of their own creative creativeness or independence, rather. But that's not the case when it comes to the Torah study. The Torah study also everything again gets animated from Chabad, but it's coming um, the laws and the rationale of of Chabad as it's expressed ultimately everything gets expressed through Malchus, because Malchus is speech, but it's Malchus not in the world of Asiya, but the world of Bria and Yitzira. Now, the Chabad there, it's not the source of created beings, right, because it's in the world of Bria and Yitzira. So it has a, it, it has a different function. It's there to bring a rectification or a rectification in the sense of bringing a sense of order, which means comprehension, right? When you comprehend something, you get the order of it. And in that comprehension um, of, it's the comprehension of the, Chab the Chabad of those worlds as it's expressed through Malchus, right? Specifically the oral, teachings because that's we can that's the rationale behind the laws the laws and its rationale which means in the world of Bria which is the world of comprehension which is the Gemara understanding you know the arguments back and forth and then the world of Yitzhira which is the adjudication of the Mishnah and the law um and, and what does it mean that it's um, it's rectifying? It's rectifying the 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 godliness of the world of Atsilos. <laughs> How's it rectifying? Atsilos is higher, the world of emanation. Yeah, but the problem with the world of emanation, I mean, problem. But the, the 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 difficulty there is that's where the Torah law comes from. Right, it derives from. Atsilos, but in Atsilos, it's beyond rationale, it's beyond comp human comprehension. So God, in his kindness, brings it down to the world of Bria and Yitzira, so we can have a rationality that the human, with, their, with our minds, can rationally now understand Torah law. As opposed to if it was didn't come down into Bria and Yitzira, the divine light that is animating these laws, then you wouldn't have an appreciation. There'd be something just beyond. Beyond. But God wants our engagement, meaning he doesn't just want us to, um, what's the word, Um, I guess, I don't know blindly is the right word, but yeah, let's say blindly just, you know, accept. Um, he wants our investment in it. So he brings it down into Priya Yitzira, this divine light of Torah teachings, in order that we can... Um, Understand. 
We can understand Torah because, well, I think Torah is, you know, it's God's Torah. It's his divine wisdom. It's even beyond wisdom. And, you know, it's not something that is uh, essentially, uh, you know, something that can be understood. But God animates the law and the rationale of the law in the world of Bria, the Chabad of as it's expressed in Malchus, in order that we can have access to it with our minds to understand. Now, that's today's class. Tomorrow's class brings this idea even further that the eights and is seemingly a contradiction. I'll just briefly give over because we concluded tomorrow, actually. Um, that the Eitz Chaim gives a um, explanation, or a rather statement, that Torah study comes from not the Nishama level, which we are explaining till now, which is divine, but Torah study is the Ruach, the spirit of spirit, Ruach of Ruach, garment of Yitzira, when you study the Mishnah, and when you study uh, um, Gemara, it's the Ruach of Nishama garment, which um, would suggest that that the Ruach level, right, Ruach and, and Nefesh level, which is not Nishama level in the creative process, is um, is already like a created, it's a created being that comes from there. So the Alta Rebbe, uh, explains that it's not a contradiction because there's an element of Torah that does go into into Klippa. You know, even though essentially it's not Klippa, it's divine, but there is an element of Torah, and we've learned this idea previously, that goes into Klippa. It goes into a place where it's not perfect um, divinity or divinity apparent, or totally apparent, shall we say, and it's now in a place of a shell that's covering over it, because that again brings out our partnership that we need to study it in order to um, bring extract that law, that rationale, that understanding um, in a place uh, where it's concealed so it brings out our engagement of why you know ultimately it does come down in, in, in a place of um, right but when we study with the proper intent the name of God does dwell within even that dimension of the Torah because ultimately this is what God wants is that we should, you know, not only find them in our hearts, not only find them through prayer, not only find them in the, in the world, material world, but to find him um, also in the in the in the in his teachings, in a way that we find him, we partner with him, in that sense. It's a phenomenal idea. Uh, well, that's it. <laughs> that's it, but that's it for now. All right, folks. Wishing everybody an amazing, uh, wonderful Erev Shabbos. A wonderful Shabbos. And... Um, God willing, we continue. And uh, in a week from today, we finish another um, year of studying Tanya. So uh, this next week is a special week of um, coming to the conclusion next uh, Erev Shabbos, God willing. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zich and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have a wonderful day.